God. I love this game. This game is so tight. We're sorry for all the headphone users at home. I know we got a little excited there, but how can you not with such a beautiful game like this? All right. Well, we're not done, guys. ladies and gents. We're not done. That was only winners finals. We're back into the losers bracket. We got losers semifinals. All righty. Okay, and of course, uh, Esam not quite uh, taking it in the winner's side, so this is the rematch. Let's see if Esam has a little bit of uh, momentum coming back from losers and see if he can get things started. Yeah, a lot of people will say that this character is like, quote unquote, free to gimp as I say that he gets gimped. But wait, no, wait. Wait a minute! He didn't get gimped, he actually took Esam's stock. And Esam, Esam just points at his, like, oh, right, right, I forgot. Okay, so <laughs> that's one overextension, and that's gonna cost him the stock there. Yeah, and wow, <laughs> what a reversal. But a lot of people will say, like, even in the very beginning of the meta, everyone's just like, oh, Krom's free, his recovery's so bad. Yeah. And I really like to see that the Krom meta is really evolving. They're, they're, we're seeing a lot of consistent Krom play, and they're making it very far in bracket. Yeah. I mean, it's like one of those things, like, you know you know how people reacted to Cloud in Smash 4. It's like, okay, he's got a bad recovery. It's just a worse Ike, basically. But yeah. it's, it's not quite happening here. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah. one of the most broken characters <laughs> in the game. Yeah, okay, but going to get that forward there. Comes at him before the upbeat comes out, going to be able to close out that stock. Yeah, and I mean, man, like, the fact that still, like, Mr. R still got a lot of stock mileage regardless. You know, he didn't tack on a lot of damage, but at the end of the day, like, he still lived to, like, 130 plus. So that, that's just really good, especially against a Pikachu, one of the best edge guarding characters in the game. Like, that's absolutely insane. Yeah. And Isan with that combo potential from Pikachu, just brings it back to even. Yeah, these Thunder Jolts, very good parry, going to set himself. Does not get the tech chase. Would have definitely got the stock if he got it, though. Yeah. Oh, there's a the jab. Going to go in right into Nair. One thing I don't see too much. Oh, gets the air dodge into the forward smash. Yeah, just the guts, the right spacing on that. Esam tried to land on him, but that's not quite going to work out. Oh, and I, I like these wave bounces. Some li a little fancy stuff coming out yeah. from Mr. R. Yeah, I mean, he was one of the most uh, technical players in Smash 4, especially especially when it came to his movement. Wow, went yes. really low on that one. I used to love watching his little Twitter videos of him doing all the stuff with Sheik. Oh, it yeah, yeah, so just, cool. just traveling on Battlefield. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but Esam already down to 54%. This is a very light character, so one good read from Krom. That'll be the game. We'll see how he gets it. Goes for the parry. Not yeah. able to find anything else, though. All right, Mr. R again. Wow, the dash back forward smash. I know you want to cross me up. I know you want to hit my shield. Let me just reposition myself, and you can go ahead and eat this beautiful, wonderful forward smash. Yep. I mean, sometimes with Pikachu, just in general, the range, uh, he has decent range for uh, as small of a character as he is, but uh, just against a character like Krom with that huge sword, going to have to commit in that direction uh, towards Krom, and sometimes one pivot, that's all he needs. He got two stocks with those uh, pivot force smashes while Esam is trying to come back with an aerial. So. Yeah, you and see. That's, that's one thing, like Pikachu and Pichu, very similar characters, they are a little different, but both of them do, they both lack range. They don't have like that disjoint that they can apply pressure with. They they lack that range, so they have to either approach in with T-Jolt or just camp with T-Jolt, or they have to come in and usually try to cross you up or try to go for their insane shield pressure. And right there, Mr. R just knew exactly what he wanted and got a really, really hard punish. Yep. And that's the one thing about Krom too. It's like you have crazy amount of damage and stuff, and then like when you do nail a read, like you're killing people at 50. Yeah. When you do nail that like super solid read, so there's not a lot of characters that can like kill at that lower percent off of a read like that. So definitely a, a thing I feel like not a lot of people will take into account. Mm -hmm. I'll try to get the lightning loops. Not gonna get anything else though. Drops it right there, but still putting him at the ledge. Still good positioning for Esam. Starting off here on Smashville. I like that Esam is going, trying to go for these. Uh, Trying to go for these uh, forward smashes and down air on the Krom up B. Uh, definitely an up B that can be exploited, mm -hmm. but it, it, it just, it's scary because if you mess up, you can die. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the scary part about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, really try to go for something there. Or maybe just baited him to go back to the stage quicker and just came back with that back air. Either way, great stuff from Mr. R. Be able to turn it back around. Oh, he uses his jump, though. A directional air dodge. Yes, he will, but Esam will be able to catch that. Mm. And another directional air dodge. Thought maybe it would be a tech situation. Yeah. That, was, that was a classic 50-50 right there. So Pikachu cannot fast fall, and then you have the tech. Or Pikachu can fast fall it, and then you buffer the tech, and then you just air dodge to your death. Yep. So Definitely a much better edge guard than last time. <laughs> yeah. Really good stuff from Esam. And that is really going to be the key to victory against Krom or Roy whenever you're playing against them in tournament. So we'll see if Esam can keep this edge guarding up. Alright, just tries to space right outside range with the Thunder Jolts, but still gets clipped there. 
But he got a tech chase situation, doesn't quite get the right guess there. Ooh, I like the wave land. And another amazing read coming out from Mr. R. The dash back into the forward smash. Yep. I mean, you'll see Krom do it, the, the dash dance in the forward smash. You'll see Royce do it. It's just a very strong option altogether. Yeah, and, the, and these characters have amazing dashes as well. Very good movement options. Yeah. Oh, and right now, Sam giving Mr. R a little taste of his own medicine with the less trap, but able to break out with that forward air. And now in a very good position trying to catch this juggle. Oh, I like the platform movement as well, coming down with that up air. And, you know, it definitely doesn't look like Isam's very, like, super, super comfortable with pairing some of these uh, falling aerials. So Mr. R definitely can go a little bit more ham skis on these falling aerials. Yeah. Okay, just uh, trying to poke with these down tilts, working out, trying to find that tech chase, but not going to quite get it. The shield comes up in time. Beautiful directional air dodge there from Mr. R. But Isam going to quick attack right in the safety there. Oh, just trying to go for it immediately, but just gets up immediately. Oh, gonna go really low. Wait a minute. Oh, almost gets that forward tilt. But on the run back, the dash back forward tilt will catch Esam now. Mr. R up two stocks to one. Yep. Oh, catches him one more time with that ether. Gets a dancing blade too. Oh, man. And now Mr. R getting to the point where he's starting to rack up that damage. Yeah, it's already halfway through to kill percent. Like at 60, a good forward smash, we'll be able to do it. So very scary position for Isan to be in. And I love how Mr. R is using this middle platform. We see him reset so many times and delay how he's going to fall through and do his aerial. And it's, it's just really great platform usage. And there's only one of them on the stage, so. All righty. Uh, dangerous spot for Isan to be in. One pivot forward smash again. That might be it. Oh, I like that. Fast falls down and gets the tech, too. Yep, really great stuff here from Mr. R. That recovery doing such a great job. And, man, oh, wait, but the forward tilt from Isam. Now we have a single stock game. Isam is bleeding quite a bit here, 87%. Okay, gets that back air, though. 101% onto Isam. One forward tilt at the ledge will do it. But oh, wait these a back airs putting him off stage. Decides the directional air dodge. Is He's keeping his jump, though. Oh, yes, really good stuff. But the thunder! Isam is going to take it and waited for the peak of the upbeat when Krom had no armor. He knew exactly when the strike. He knew that Mr. R was saving his jump. He knew he was saving his resources. And he caught finally punishing that upbeat. Amazing edge guard coming out from Isam. Yeah, we almost had the exact same. Yeah, we basically had the same exact scenario when they were playing on winner's side, where Isam will get those back airs and continuously put them off stage. And Mr. R would come in continuously with the directional air dodges. And Isam thought he was dead, but he saved his jump that entire time. Mr. R tried to mix it up this time around, use a jump early, try to make him go above the back airs from Isam, but he was just ready for it, got that thunder. And that was the stock. And that's a game, too. Yeah, and that's a very powerful tool that Pikachu and Pichu have. They can put their body low, but they can edge guard above them with the thunder, with the spiking hitbox. So it, it's very insane. <laughs> Those two characters go very ham off stage, and their moves are also very quick as well. So they can reactively edge guard as well. And if they get a solid read, they also have that downer spike. Many, many different tools to edge guard. Yep, so we're going 1-1 one, one here. Moving on to Pokemon Stadium. A really good pick, and definitely a pick we've seen Mr. R kind of avert to a lot. And I mean, for most, for the most part, a lot of people um, that are pretty comfortable on this stage. Right. Okay, and there's a forward air coming out from Isam. Let's see if we can get anything started here. Oh, and there's that falling up airs, and right now, Ramen really doing a great job utilizing those platforms. Okay, both of them just kind of hitting each other's single hits, uh, unboxing situations, not quite committing yet. But Isam going to get something started, gets those up tilts, gets those juggles, tries to carry him all the way off, but it doesn't quite work there. But uses the Thunder Joke to protect himself too. I mean, nonetheless, amazing damage here for Isam. Also getting that reach around going into, and another Thunder! Isam is ready for these up -bees, and I think he's found the answer on how to deal with them. Yep. Just uh, go underneath them, and that would work out just fine. Even if he did tech that, he was in such an awkward position, I don't even think he would have made it back. So overall, just great option coverage from Isam. Oh, there's a directional air dodge, able to get back to the ledge, but the back air will cover the normal getup, and we have a very similar situation. Ooh, <laughs> are able to directional yeah. air dodge to the ledge that time. Mm -hmm. Isam kind of giving him the space that time around, but still not relenting on the pressure. The pivot force smash giving Mr. R a taste of his own medicine there. And the other thing, too, is Mr. R's other character is Snake, and I do not think the Snake's going to come out versus Esam. So we're going to probably stick it, try it through with this matchup. But right now, it definitely seems like Esam has got a lot. He is figuring out and definitely executing these edge guards on Krom. Yeah. Okay, guess that 
quick attack. Oh, man. <laughs> he is using quick attack a lot, and it is working. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's such a good move because it pops you up just a little bit where you can't immediately do something on the ground. You have to wait for yourself to come back to the ground. So it gives Esam another time to either go for, like, another one or read the defensive option or something like that. So great stuff from Esam, putting himself in a good position. Last stock for Mr. R, potentially on game three. Esam, oh, and the back air call out will do it. A three stock coming out from Panda Global's own Esam. Wow, what a game. Yep. Looked a bit shaky on the first and even the second game a little bit, but that time around, just uh, knew exactly where Mr. R wanted to be on those edge guards, and he was on point with it. Exactly. And we'll see. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't see him going snake. I just, I literally don't not, see not him. Neither do I. <laughs> so I, I just feel like he's almost forced to stick it out with Krom. Um, Esam, very good friends and training partner with MVD, and that's pretty much currently the best snake right now in the world. So I, I don't, I don't see him going snake. Don't do it, dude. <laughs> okay, not not King DDD. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, all right. <laughs> It's always scary when those char when those players just like go like near the characters like wait I have something because uh, another <laughs> I, got, I got some crazy pocket cooking up you guys don't know man yeah see, I mean, see my DDD in Elite Smash bro <laughs> <laughs> I mean another cursed character uh, from East Ham's history is Mr Game and Wash but I don't know if that's quite the the case this time around oh yeah well we'll have to see uh, we're going on FD this time. Ooh, wow, getting the up throw in the thunder, almost clipping him off stage. But since Pikachu, it matters what side of the thunder you're on, he was able to get back on the stage. But nonetheless, Mr. R still taking an incredible amount of damage. Oh, the get up attack, of course, that does have invincibility all the way through. So if Thank you're goodness. charging, um, <laughs> if you're charging at the ledge, then you can just get that as long as you're in range for it. Yeah, in Smash 4, if you went for a bold get up attack like that against that move, you were just done. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, can you might trade and like just it's bad yeah. overall, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, now get up attack, a very good option in this game. Like you said, you have intangibility the whole way through until your hitbox comes out, so you will beat out those moves. Yep. The dash attack comes in one more time. Oh, I'll try to use like the, the projectile only to clip him off stage again. Not quite gonna work there. Yeah, very smart. Even if it didn't kill, it's just like pretty much guaranteed damage at that point. The Thunder Jolt into the up smash. He's time gonna take that very first stock now. Up an entire stock here in this game number four. Okay, Mr. R knows the tricks. He knows that Thunder underneath to protect himself, and so he's gonna do that. But still tacking on the damage and not quite finding these pivot force smash like his like he were, was earlier in the set. Yo, we got the lightning loops coming out from Esam already racking 61%. And yeah, like I said, or like you said, the uh, the force smashes are not hitting their marks anymore, and that was a big deal. He was uh, Mr. R was getting very early kills. Now offstage situation here once again for Mr. R. Another fair that should do it. Yeah. Okay. Potential uh, three Dang. stock again, don't, though. Don't, come on, man. Don't 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 do it to him, Esam. <laughs> don't do it to him, Esam. Don't just... do it to him, Esam. Okay, he's gonna air dodge through. Okay, oh, he's just okay. fine. <laughs> I mean, th this is what I'm scared of. Uh, whenever Esam is feeling himself a little bit too hard, he could potentially put himself in a reversal situation. So he's yeah. just got to be careful and just make sure he's doing exactly what he was in the first two stocks and not get ahead of himself here. All right, Esam. Wow, still surviving here. 127 here and. Just such a difficult thing for Mr. R to do is like just nail this stock. I mean, he did get three stocks last game as well. So just, just he's getting the damage, but he can't get these stocks. Finally, the forward tilt hits below the ledge. Is gonna catch that quick attack. Yeah, 65% though. That's pretty dangerous for Krom. Gonna be sent off stage very reliably from a lot of Pikachu's normals and his aerials. So we'll have to see how it goes down. Okay, another quick attack, putting him in the air, forcing him to try and go for an aerial option, and Esam is content to stay right outside of it, taking a page out of Light's book too. Yep, gets that parry on the falling up air. Oh, very good neutral B coming out from Mr. R. And I definitely don't doubt Mr. R can make the comeback, but he's gonna have to be playing very, very clean. Can't get hit off stage or can't take too much damage as well. Yeah. He's got him at 50%, maybe get a solid forward smash reach, bring this to the last stock situation. Oh, there's the tech, tech chase. chase. Now he's off stage here. Gonna go for the thunder and yeah, very safe thunder. But he's able to make it back on stage. Pretty worth, honestly. Yeah, it doesn't send you too far horizontally, it just sends you upward more than anything. So Krom will be able to come back from that. Up throw, forward throw. Puts him off stage one more time. Tries to clip him with Thunder Jolt. Not gonna happen there. Oh, that's another bad positioning. Goes for the up throw and that's it. Yep, gonna take it there. And I think Esam at that point was playing very, very safe. He didn't want to go 